I gotta admit, last night that guy from Notre Dame really set me off so bad that I'm defending Michigan. That's how angry that guy made me when he said, you know, I didn't care. You know, he doesn't care about the Michigan series. You know, he doesn't. He didn't think Notre Dame needed to be in the Big Ten. So I did some data today. Really looking forward to having this. Uh, really was really hoping you were going to have a show today. So I wrote down some uh, some data here. So you ready? I'm ready. Fire. All right. All right. So Michigan leads all time, twenty seventeen and one, one tie. When he said that they taught Michigan how to play football, Michigan. Now, granted, this was pre World War One, or yeah, like pre World War Two, pre World War One. Michigan still won the first four meetings that they ever played. Notre Dame did not win until I, I, th- I believe like 1943 or something like that. I, I didn't write that one down. Since 2006, they have lost seven. To- Notre Dame has lost seven times to uh, Michigan since 2006, and I think we you remember that game when um, in 06 Notre Dame was supposed to be Ohio State Notre Dame rematch for the oh, national yeah. title that year. Some people even argued Notre Dame should have been number one over Ohio State. Michigan went to South Bend and just boat raced them. Yep. That was the game Mario Manningham just had a field day. So they've lost seven times to Michigan since then. The average margin margin of victory that they have lost to Michigan this century, uh, they played from since 2002, and they've played uh, 15 times since then. Michigan's average margin of victory is 19 and a half points. When Notre Dame wins, it's an 11 and a half point uh, margin of victory. They are seven and eight. Uh, Notre Dame is seven and eight against Michigan this century. They are now, as far as going back to the Big Ten overall, who else would they compete against? They are eight and eight since 2000 against uh, Michigan State. Now, and uh, since 2000, from 97 to 2001, Michigan State beat Notre Dame five straight years. Uh, they have lost three of the last five to Penn State, and they have lost four in a row to Ohio State. Now, granted, they have not, uh, they play Wisconsin this year. They have not played since 1962. But, and, um, but, but the, uh, I forgot to write that down. The, uh, record between Wisconsin and Michigan, uh, Notre Dame is not very far. I think Michigan or Notre Dame only leads by like four or five games. So, out of everyone else, they only really have a dominant all time record against Northwestern, Purdue, and Indiana and Minnesota. They have a losing record against Nebraska. And I'm, and it's going to be kind of a toss up between. It, I'm sure Notre Dame would probably be favored against Wisconsin this year, but uh, probably not by much. Would you agree? Absolutely, I would think they'd be a four to six point okay. favorite, something in that range. We'll see once but we get there. Obviously, that's where I'm going to be in the, Yeah, that's, and, and yeah, obviously that's the Penn too. State so, series would be difficult for them as well, and has been in the past. Exactly. So, right. Yeah. So yeah, they are nine nine and one all time against Penn State. So. I don't know where that guy gets off trying to say, you know, they don't need the Big Ten. And the way that, it, you know, it would benefit Notre Dame more being in the ACC, he's part true because they would not win in the in the Big Ten. They would lose two games a year, regardless if they were in the East or the West. They would lose two games a year at minimum in the Big Ten because they would probably likely have that crossover game in the right. If they were being in the West, they would likely have the crossover rivalry game with Michigan or Michigan. Uh, my guess, I'm just going to make an assumption, would probably be probably be Michigan, and then you know they would be they're pretty even with Wisconsin right now in terms of their program status. And then when they would occasionally play Ohio State, they play twice uh, in the next two years. Ohio State would clearly be favored against Notre Dame. I just don't see the benefit of being in the ACC for Notre Dame, and it kind of displays some arrogance because the guy said, you know, well, being in the ACC kind of helps them you know, recruit in that Southeast region, you know, in the Carolina region, Virginia, the Georgias and all that. I adamantly disagree with that because those Southeastern kids don't care about Notre Dame. Like the kids, like, like Kevin's point, if you're 40 and younger, Notre Dame doesn't appeal like it did unless you're 40 and over. You don't remember those glory days. And plus, you know, again, the SEC and those Southeastern uh, region programs, ACC and SEC have risen so much in the last 25 years. Again, Notre Dame just doesn't have that appeal that it once did. I'm not, I'm not knocking the program. It's still a great program, still a prestigious program, but they don't have that unique prestige like they once had. So I, I just don't see Notre Dame out recruiting 
Alabama, Clemson, LSU, Georgia, Florida. I mean, rarely how often do they beat out those programs for players? So to me, it was just kind of a sense of they know they won't compete in the Big Ten. Again, 29 and 23 since 2000 against Big Ten teams. So that's what I got. What are your thoughts? Oh, well, and by I'm, the way, Notre Dame was one and two. They were all – kind of cut you off. I got one more stack here. They were one and two against Rich Rock teams. So what are, what are they talking about? So that's why the run is, yeah, we don't care about the rivalry, but that, that's garbage. I mean, they, they know they can't beat Michigan. Yeah, they had a nice season in uh, 2019. They finished 11 and two in top 10 in the country, but they went to Ann Arbor and got uh, ambushed, uh, 45 to 14. Yes, that's the last uh, Notre Dame uh, game against uh, the Big Ten. So, my thoughts about Notre Dame joining the Big Ten, and again, I speak strictly from a football standpoint. I'm not looking at the other sports, even though Notre Dame would be a great fit in men's college basketball traditionally against uh, the Big Ten. Is there's no question geographically. So check that box. It's not even our, an argument. Of course, they're, they're right smack dab in the middle of Indiana. They're in big 10 country. Their football tradition is more closely tied to the big 10 than any conference by far. They don't have conference affiliation. They don't have any ties to the ACC. None of those schools in Notre Dame have any kind of history Pitt a little bit, uh, outside of that, they, they don't, you know, the Miami, that was a national series there for a few years, just because they were both on yep. top of their game late in the eighties. But basically, basically any connection that people make Notre Dame, Miami, we would love to see them play is all based on about two to three games. It's all based on basically two games played in the late eighties. Other than that, they've not played significant games against each other. They played two games that decided which team would go to a national championship in both 1988 and 89. Other than that, there's no significance to Miami and Notre Dame. None. Whereas, as you outlined, Notre Dame has strong ties to three teams in particular in the Big Ten. Michigan, Notre Dame, I, I did not agree with uh, Brian. I didn't get into it with him. I just let him go on this point about, I, I don't know, and Nathan made the same comment about having more attachment to the Purdue and Michigan state series than Michigan, but growing up as a college football fan that basically disliked both of them and hated Michigan. Um, I thought that was a great game. That was always a must see game for me. I wanted to see Michigan Notre Dame play. And they did play every year. And that Agreed. was, that was one mm -hmm. of the games I wanted to see more than any game on the schedule outside of Ohio state playing. Yep. USC, Notre Dame, mm -hmm. Michigan, Notre Dame, Auburn, Alabama. Yes, Michigan, Notre Dame was right near the top of the list every year. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to see them Mark, play. My first game I remember, yeah, my, sorry to cut you off. My first game I ever remember watching was the Rocket Ishmael game, the Michigan, Notre Dame sure. game when he returned those two kickoffs. Yep. So, I mean, I went I went on my own way to watch because I, especially here in the Midwest, that's a huge game. That's a huge game, and it's so good for the sport. Those are two blue bloods going at it, and it's just like, to me, the way he was just saying that he, they're running. You know, I remember Brady Ho called him out when they canceled. He goes, yeah, it's the series that they're chickening out of. And Bo Schimbeck, Bo Schimbeck was famous, quote, the hell with Notre Dame. You know what I mean? So it's just really sad to see them kind of stoop to that level and use such weak excuses, you know, to avoid playing the Big Ten. So I, I finally found those other records. So – they're 56, 25 and two against Purdue, 36, 28 and one against Michigan State. So only an eight game lead, 37 and nine against Northwestern, 17, 19, or I'm sorry, 17, 20 and one against Michigan, 22 and three against Indiana, 13, eight and three against Iowa, nine, nine and one against Penn State, eight, six and two against Wisconsin, seven, eight and one against Nebraska, 10, 0 and one against Illinois, two and four against Ohio State. Uh, they're five and 0 against Rutgers, four, 0 and one against Minnesota, and they're two and 0 against Maryland. So, I mean, it's so pretty much all like the big dogs there in the big, in the big 10, you know, it, if they're not losing, it's close. So uh, to me, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think they really have that unique prestige anymore. They're still great. They're still a great brand. They're still a huge name. 
I still I think very highly of Brian Kelly. I think he's done a phenomenal job. You know, that, that is one of the toughest places to coach, to recruit, and to win at because they have the, such the slimmest margin for error without having a conference championship game. So I think Brian Kelly has done a phenomenal job, but yet when I hear these excuses, it's so infuriating, and it kind of creates this stigma and animosity towards the program that is more on a national landscape. And I think, you know, it would – I'm sorry, I'm going to disagree with the guy. I think they would benefit more being in the Big Ten. Uh, than being in the ACC. But then again, of course, like you are, I'm thinking strictly from a football standpoint. Yeah, I, I don't care about the other sports. I could care less. Uh, I only care about football. And academically, he, he had an explanation that I can't refute because I, I don't, again, know. I've I've kept up with the academic standards and so forth in the past, but currently I'm not up to date on what would be the better fit, but the big 10 is arguably along with the PAC 12. If you take the entire collection of schools, the top ranked academic conference out of the power five. So I would think Notre Dame would fit in with Michigan, Ohio state, Northwestern and other schools that have a, a quality reputation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, yeah I'm mean... seeing Michigan's won seven of the last 11 games. I'm looking at the, um, series right here and look at the margin of victory there i mean again um since 2006 i did it was 16 almost 17 points margin of victory since 2006 and since 2002 michigan's average margin of victory is 19 and a half points and again they lost to some bad rich rod teams they lost to some bad michigan teams it was just kind of a but then it was also a stretch there where like it seemed like the road team was always winning but then, you know, that kind of ended, you know, when, uh, was it 2018 when they, uh, was the first game of the year and they lost? Michigan just played awful. I think their only touchdown was a kick return. And then, but then, like you said, 2019, you know, Michigan got the payback and they beat a much better Notre Dame team. Um, that game shocked me. I thought Notre Dame was going to win that game because I just didn't think Michigan had it in them. So again, man, I just, that, that just really, did not sit well with me last night to a point where that guy made me defend Michigan football. And that's what made me even angrier. Well, Rod, I'll say it this way and then I'll move on to some other calls. Basically that uh, again, from a football standpoint, from a geographic standpoint, there's no question that Notre Dame is best fit in the big 10. I don't fall to Notre Dame for any of this though. They make money. They recruit top 10 teams. They produce top 10 teams. They make a lot of money in television. They're exclusive. They keep their brand, their image. They keep their their unique quality of the program being separate from anyone else. And so I don't, I don't fault them for holding on to that. I think that's why there needs to be unification of college football to force them to go into a conference or be cast off as completely mm -hmm. irrelevant. Um, so I, I don't blame Notre Dame whatsoever. I get it. I get it too. I mean, from a business or a logical adult standpoint, absolutely bad. It's a selfish fan of me. Just like I hate the one and done system in basketball. It's a selfish fan of me. Hates it. But the logical adult understands why the players leave. So, all right, Mark, I know you got other callers, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. 